I, 24M, gave my father, 61M, all my savings for retirement and I loathe it. This happened roughly two months ago and I have to give some background to explain why I feel this way. I graduated a top law school a year ago, just after COVID started. I will be finishing the mandatory legal internship next month and halfway through internship I realized that I really don't like if not hate the practice. I will not go into detail why I don't like it but I drag myself out of bed in misery every morning to go to work. I've been honest about how I feel about the job to my family and that I'm thinking quitting law practice for good to focus on programming. My family was never been supportive especially on irrational decisions, but this particular topic, they took it up to a next level. Every time this comes up there will be profane statements about such a failure I will be if I drop practicing law and that law is a prestigious and profitable profession. This debate is going on for nine months already. Well, I made my mind to quit. I had some savings to get me through the year without taking any money from them and I planned it throughly. I told them that I will be quitting after completing the mandatory internship. Two months ago, my father needed money for his retirement, where I live. Government gives you monthly payments when you retire. He was going to take loan from a bank but his credit score was quite low so they denied his application. Mother asked me for money and my father was in such a bad mood because it was his last chance to retire. Well I gave him all my savings and he covered the rest by taking loan from the bank. He was lacking percent one oh fifteen percent of the money and since it was a small sum bank had no problem giving. Two months passed and I'm still firm about my decision quitting. Since then every time the topic came up half of their statements are about how I will support myself financially if quit. I've never rubbed it to their face how I gave all my money for the retirement but to be frank, I loathe it big time. It may be wrong how I feel about this but I can't help it. Even when I'm idling, I think about my financial situation and feel extremely anxious. I'm even thinking about not quitting due to monetary issues. Should I talk to my father about how I feel or leave it at that since it was my decision giving the money in the first place? You shouldn't have helped them. This was 100% a bad idea. They don't care about you and were never supportive. You gave them all of your savings? What about you, though? You are important bro. It just baffles me how you graduated a top law school, which tells me you are really smart, but you simply made a poor decision. I pray you somehow come back from this and I truly do wish you good luck. You live and you learn I guess. This might resonate. Um, what job do you currently have? This reads like you're asking about one issue giving them the money but the biggest issue is why aren't you making dollar 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 as a lawyer? I'd put my foot down like, this career path literally making me suicidal. I am pursuing other avenues in order to improve my mental health. That's the end of it. If you talk about this at any point in the future, no I will exit. Big mistake helping in this case. Just out of curiosity, out of all the different types of law that one can practice, there's not a single one you like? At all? You've looked into all of them and you hate every single type of law there is to practice? Is there no way to combine the law and programming? I see a lot of courses that teach lawyers programming so I'm guessing there is a market for lawyers that can do this. In any case, it sounds like your dad suckered you out of your savings to keep you in law. Luckily you are only 24 so you can learn from this mistake and begin saving money again. I would advise to sell your soul for another year or so build a little savings with a deadline in mind. Then quit. That way you don't have to ask them for anything. Also you can always come back to law. But you will regret not following your dreams. Update. My girlfriend has gone MIA. See my profile for my first post. My girlfriend got back yesterday afternoon. I picked her up at the airport. Once we got home we ordered some takeout. I could not wait for dinner to be over. I think she dragged it out as long as she could. She was fidgety, in constant motion so she did not sit down. First it was the stuff from dinner, had to unpack, wanted to get laundry started. I finally took hold of her hands and sat her down. She immediately started crying. I had not asked her anything. She was blubbering on about how bad she felt about how she mistreated me. I let her go until she calmed down. I started out asking how the girls were doing, how MWAS the wedding, what were some of the things she did in then preparations? Did she do anything with the girls that were fun? This seemed to calm her down and relax. Then I asked why she disappeared and did not answer my texts. She says they were busy from the time she landed. She was out for meals and visiting old friends. I asked if the ex was with her during time. He was. So I asked if it felt no time passed since she was home. She said it did. We went along this vein of questions for a bit. 
I asked if she kissed her ex when she arrived. She said they hugged and she kissed his cheek. She said she kissed her friends when they met up. I asked if she held the ex's hand as they went to different places. She had. I then asked, what day did she sleep with him? She started crying so I stayed silent. She asked me why I would ask her that question. I told her she went missing for two days and when we did talk I did not feel she was missing me. I remained quiet. She thought on this and started crying again. She admitted they slept together each night except the first. After we made plans for me the fly out Friday she felt guilty. Then when I told her I was not coming she was mad and slept with him the rest of the week. This is too new, last night but I told her we need to break up. She is talking to family right now to arrange a place to stay. So sometime this week she will be moving out. I am so sorry disappointed. It sounds as if you handled a terrible situation really well. Her actions are not a reflection on you, they are a reflection on her. So, she was already sleeping with him multiple times, then got mad at you and used it as an excuse to continue sleeping with him? That's got a sting. I think you did the right thing in ending the relationship. I'm sorry. What's disappointing is that she both cheated and had you pull it out of her. She didn't even have the honor to break up. She didn't have the moral character that you thought. You did the right thing. I swear, some Redditors are clairvoyant. I'm sorry this happened, op. Please please be careful, I beg of you. Do not have sex with this woman ever again unless you want to be paying child support for the next 18 years. Stay strong and be good to yourself. I respect your strength in that horrible, tortuous interaction. You retained your dignity. You, sir, are a gentleman for holding your composure through every drop of trickle truth you knew was coming. Ah, uh, this sub can be so depressing. Like I wish one of these situations would go right just one time but it feels like it's always the worst. I'm sorry for you sir, and hope you can get a clean break from her and move on. I'm sorry op. You did the right thing breaking up. Dude, your interrogation skills are on point. Sorry your girlfriend got bit by a werewolf. Boyfriend found a dating app on my phone. What should I do? Before you comment let me explain what the scenario is. So I met this boy like 3 months ago via Tinder and we've really been hitting it off. We became official like 2 weeks ago. Before that I never had a relationship. Yesterday, he wanted to see which games I had on my phone. I have literally up to 10 plus pages of apps, games I haven't touched for years. When I scrolled through he saw a dating app I apparently forgot to delete. I had never actually used the dating app because it was paid so I didn't recognize it at first, so I said, I don't remember this app and then I remembered again. I did however delete all the apps I actually used after the second date, which was like half a week and after we started dating. Then he told me he didn't believe me, which really hurt because I consider myself to be a truthful person and hate people who lie. We sat down somewhere and I explained everything and now he understands. However, he did say that if something like this would happen again that he'd never trust me again. He also said that he would be more cautious with me going forward. I understand why he reacted like this, because his ex cheated on him with one of these apps and almost gave him HIV. However, it really hurts that I'm being punished for something I didn't even do. It's just hard now for me after he called me basically a liar and is going to be more cautious with me going forward. Did I really deserve this? I mean I even let it slide when he asked me if I was texting my ex on our third date, I was texting my mom lol. I understand he's got a jealous trait but still. Am I just playing the victim or are my concerns legit? You should have opened it right in front of him, and it would have just opened to a login screen and you could explain that you never used it with your lack of login and username to back it up. I understand his cautious statement. And if you're as faithful as you say, it will wear off fairly quickly. This is the probably the most common way people cheat nowadays so it's not coming from nowhere. But if he doesn't get over it, and makes you live in an apologetic state forever, it's probably time to end it. He didn't want to see what games you had, he wanted to go through your phone. So that's your first red flag here. Your second is that he doesn't believe you. He didn't trust you to begin with and made a lame excuse to go through your phone. He made threats and has let you know you are on notice. We all have baggage from previous relationships but we don't get to use this to shit all over other people. I'd tread carefully with this one. ETA I missed the part where he asked if you were texting an ex in your third date. This man had major jealousy and control issues. In general this tends not to get better with time. Some of these comments, are you teenagers? You are not playing the victim. You are weeks into a relationship, and forgot you had an app on your phone that you've never used. 
The only red flag behavior is your boyfriend's. Listen. Just be confident and own up to all of your actions. You can only apologize so many times. If you didn't do anything, do not put yourself down for anyone else's benefit. Maybe explain to him that you understand how it might look and you can see that it is upsetting him. Maybe ask if there's anything you can do to help the situation. Besides that, I believe it's his insecurity and you shouldn't feel like you did something wrong. You're three months into a relationship, not three years. You really expect him to know the real you after three months? Don't het your hopes up for this relationship. This guy is damaged goods. He strategically positioned himself as the victim to justify his hypervigilance and make you compliant to his demands through guilt. He's playing out the end of his prior relationship with you. Soon you'll be the untrustworthy girlfriend victimizing him and he'll move on to another untrustworthy girlfriend who victimizes him. He'll figure this out eventually. But will he figure it out during your relationship? I wouldn't hold your breath. First, you aren't being punished. He is being appropriately cautious. That's not a punishment. Second, this isn't something you didn't do, it is something you did do. The app was on your phone. You didn't use it, but it was there. He is reacting to something real. Don't pretend otherwise. Third, you are not a victim in this situation. It is unfortunate, but if the situation were reversed, you would probably feel exactly the same way. Instead of playing the victim, why don't you just acknowledge that his feelings are reasonable? He isn't wrong to feel the way that he feels, and since you aren't cheating, it will be easy for you to restore his trust. If you smile and tell him both things, I think you will feel better and you will be on the path to restoring your relationship. What I've learned is that not everyone always remembers to delete stuff. You guys haven't been together that long either, especially if it isn't like right there on your home screen or whatever. The fact you are letting him look through your phone, I would think that would show him you had nothing to hide and it was just a careless mistake on your part. I think him making threats to leave if it happens again is a red flag, it feels a bit controlling to me. Boyfriend put a hidden camera in my bedroom. For context, I am 21 and he is 22. I live in an apartment by myself but he basically lives here with me and sleeps here about 5 nights a week. Tonight he was leaving my apartment and he went back to my room to get something. I followed him shorty after and saw him touching the tapestry I have hanging above my bed. After he left I touched it to see why, and I found a throwaway iPhone recording above where I sleep. I immediately called him freaking out and he admitted to it, and said that he has major insecurity and trust issues and thinks I talk to other guys when he leaves. I am the most loving, adoring and loyal girlfriend to him. I always reassure him and even let him look through my phone whenever because I know he has these issues. This isn't the first thing he's done like that, I've caught him going through my phone, laptop multiple times and he's hacked into my social medias and even made a fake account to catfish me. His psychotic behavior is our only issue, besides that our relationship is great. I'm extremely in love with him and attached to him, he's been the only stable person in my life as I have a really bad relationship with my parents. I don't want to leave him at all. I am so heartbroken about this whole thing and I'm still talking to him and telling him how sad I am and he just keeps saying he wants to see a therapist and he knows he's crazy and he wants to change. He said I can come to the therapist with him. I'm sorry for the long post but I'm having so much anxiety and am so torn. Please help. You are attached to him because he's the only stable presence in your life. You said it yourself. He's not a good boyfriend. He's not a safe person to be around. If you choose to stay, this is what you'll continue to deal with. I would strongly advise against staying. But I'm sure your self-esteem will make that decision for you. Time to put your big girl pants on. You used psychotic and stable to describe the same person. Did you mean stable presence maybe? But honestly it's a major red flag, an obvious invasion of privacy on top of huge lack of trust. I personally wouldn't forgive him but if you believe him to be genuine about his plan for therapy and he makes progress there, then good for the both of you. But going through one's belongings, even after being offered, is vastly different from being watched, recorded without consent. On another note, how www did you find out he tried to catfish you? Did he tell you after passing his test? Jesus. This isn't the first thing he's done like that. And yet you continue to tolerate it. What you're telling him is that he can violate your privacy and your boundaries in any way he pleases and you'll keep taking him back. This is the life you're choosing. Break up with him. WTF? Hell no. You need to sweep your entire apartment to find the other cameras. You need to file a police report. Change your locks and consider seriously getting a lawyer. 
No reputable therapist will have therapy with you and your abuser. You need to run. Having a relationship with an obsessed psycho is bad for your health. As in he might murder you when you talk to a male co-worker dangerous. This is abuse. This is not a relationship problem to be fixed in therapy. This is controlling and stalking behavior. It will only get worse. You need to dump him and block him everywhere. I'm so sorry, but I was married to someone like this. It only escalates. It gets worse and worse. My ex was in therapy when we met and went religiously while we were married and after. Our relationship still ended with a restraining order and him losing custody of our kids. Please get out and get yourself a therapist. You need to heal you. He's been the only stable person in my life. He's not stable. His psychotic behavior is our only issue. It's a toxic and major issue. I don't want to leave him at all. Please get help. You should be running like your tail is on fire. www.thehotline.org Oh hun, this is a go to the police level of gross behavior, not just a tiny white lie you caught him in. I know you love him, but this is not normal. Please, please take a step back from the relationship and the feelings and try to look at it from an outsider's perspective. How would you feel if your best friend or your daughter came to you and said that someone was secretly recording them? What advice would you give them? You're not safe. Do you have any friends you could stay with or come visit you? I worry that if you try to build boundaries or break up with him, he will hurt you.